there's me putting away the uh, putting away our overpowered uh, not, not really overpowered but putting away our starter stuff uh, yet yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty good uh, match the uh, the shield I was just showing the uh, transgressor shield is a really really light I think it's probably the lightest shield in the game and it has pretty good resistances but you still have you still have your uh, your red icon though for uh, for armor hmm. I'm pretty sure it goes away at some point yeah. Well, regardless, we meet our first NPC. Right. Most important one. Of the curse. I will Finally, Estes. One thing oh, I uh, go ahead. I don't get is why Fom seems to have a thing for having you leveling up by talking to someone. Demon Dark Souls 1 is the only game where you don't do it. You do it in Demon Souls. You've got the Maiden in Black. You right. do it in this one with the Emerald Herald. You uh -huh. do it in Bloodborne with the um, something dull. Okay. So yeah, th yeah. I, th I think I've heard people mention you mention like something dull and from Bloodborne, but I've never I haven't played it yet, so I wasn't uh, familiar with it. Yeah, but again, she serves the same purpose as uh, huh. the Maiden in Black and the Emerald Herald. So I don't know why they decided not to do that in Dark Souls One, and I'm very glad they did because it is a bit mm -hmm. tedious having to wander back. But yeah, especially on especially on console where you have those long loading screens to deal with. I'm told that this it's, like, it's not as bad on on PC nowadays, especially if you have a solid state drive and all that good stuff. But yeah, you, I mean on PS3, I'm looking at a good uh, 20 second or so loading screen. You know, and that's it adds up if you're going going back and forth to level up with uh, with Emmy. Yeah, see, that's uh, what... actually the loading screens are one of the reasons I did originally stop my Bloodborne playthrough because. I am not very good at these games. I say this with no, uh, you know, I, I will never claim to be good at these games. So I was seeing the Bloodborne loading screen rather a lot. Right. And at 45 seconds a hit, it Jeez. gets tedious. And at the, when the game was yeah. first released, they didn't even have the little in item splash infos on it. So mm -hmm. they were really boring splash screens. You couldn't even at least, you know, learn a bit of lore. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That would probably have have gotten me pretty pretty tired on the whole thing too. <laughs> so I am going to restart it as soon as I pick up the DLC. I'm going to restart my run because I've got no idea where I've got to. Right. Um, are you thinking? Are you going to LP that at some point, or just? Uh... I yeah, I might do actually. Because mm. um, I've got this new Eglato box, so I can record from the PlayStation onto the PC again. Not the uh, super spiffy HD60, but the previous one, so it can work with my PS3. Uh, Eglato, is that the Chinese knockoff of the Elgato? <laughs> ha ha. You know what I mean. I don't know yes. why I keep calling it Eglato. I think because Elgato just makes me think of cats. Ex yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, Not nobody, nobody's called a streaming box after a cat. It would just, uh, it well, would there, just there you know, refuse to do anything. Uh, there goes like your the chance of getting... Box. Right, there goes your chance of getting the Angry Mog branded uh, LP software then. <laughs> there goes my chance, yes. <laughs> All right, and uh, yeah, Without... we talked... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, streaming boxes, the, the yeah. Hawpage is such a pile of poo. If anybody is thinking about buying a uh, box, you know, a streaming box for their console, get an, do not get a Hawpage. Yeah, if you're if you're watching this and you are dying to show us up how real Dark Souls is played, do it with an Elgato <laughs> or Shadow Play on your PC. But you know. Uh, anyway, that's um, it, 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 we didn't Mog didn't talk to him, and he'll, he'll be on the. I'm doing a separate video after this one for uh, for, for all the NPCs here in Majula to talk to. So this is basically Mog just grabbing all the stuff that isn't nailed down, like a good protagonist. Yeah, like know, like like your like your good RPG hero. Yeah. I mean, and, I didn't, uh, I didn't talk to everybody because I figured most people who are watching this would probably be f at least vaguely familiar with the NPCs already. Right. I mean, I didn't yeah, even go and talk to the cat. Oh, oh, that's the, I, just, I didn't even catch that. That's kind of disappointing. <laughs> I know. I, I was thinking I should go back and talk to the cat. Yeah, I like the cat. To she's clearly <laughs> my theory about the cat is she's actually one of, um, she's a descendant of what's her name, Alvina. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it kind of makes sense. I mean, you started off with, uh, in an ancient Earth, you ended up with you know those you know, giant uh, five foot tall wolves, and now we have like chihuahuas. You can see, you can see Alvina, you know, over these over the millennia, her species becoming like uh, house cats. You know. <laughs> oh, 
always feel bad in Dark Souls 1 if I attack the, the three roll cats, because they're clearly supposed to be related, you know, I mean, in my head, Ken, they're Alzina's kittens. I, you know, you know, I get, well, the thing is, uh, she, she's smaller than they are, though. Maybe she's... Yeah, but you, uh, maybe... plenty of farm cats are like that. You've got a tiny mum cat mm -hmm. and then giant kittens. Hmm. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> and again, you know, she's clearly a mythic beastie, so... Yeah. Like, you know, if you look at puppy sift, grown-up sif, mm -hmm. that's, oh, you that's... know, dogs do not change that much. True, true. <laughs> yeah, puppy sif is about the same size as a big dog. Right. Whereas, you know, the, the great gray wolf version is like 10 feet, 10 feet of the shoulder, so... <laughs> Or, or I guess I guess since we're I'm talking with somebody British, I should do like three meters, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're 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 kind of weird, you know. Things like we still use miles for, oh, yeah. for our roads, and See, miles I, per I hour for that. our speed rather than kilometers. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I would not. I, if that had been like a trivia question, I would have gotten it wrong. <laughs> uh, whilst ever practically everything else is metric, you know, we we buy weight, we buy food, you know, food that you buy by weight, like sweets or meat, you buy it by, by the kilo, in, right? In, in, by the kilo. Mm -hmm. um, that that's only changed re a few. No, I say recently, but um, mm -hmm. so it it changed in my memory. You went from buying <laughs> them by imperial measures to buying them by. Uh, metric measures right right and we were and uh, finally about uh and this is 40 minutes in to the uh in the in the video here we're finally starting in our first actual dungeon that's yeah. just how much tutorial there is in dark souls 2 especially compared to the first one where you've got people that like uh, i think world record speed runs are like 50 minutes in dark souls 1. i mean to be just fair to... You, with betwixt you can just run through it we just went yeah. through it in detail to show the changes this shows how much we care about all of our viewers. You guys show off everything. <laughs> oh, so speaking of showing off new things. Down here, we have a hippo. Yes. This guy is new to the area in Scholar. Again, I don't fight him for the obvious reasons that this character probably wouldn't survive. That, that he would eat you, right. <laughs> yeah. Now, these guys, this little mob of guys is pretty much the same. They're, they're not... I think there's one of them in a different place. Like the axe guy who's playing dead by the glowy on the left, mm -hmm. he's somewhere yeah. different and is alive to start with. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I, I, normally, normally there's two guys at that first part, and uh, there's a, there's another one here in uh, in Scholar. But yeah, but this area isn't this immediate area isn't really that different apart mm -hmm. from the hippo. Yeah, we we don't switch until the next the next part of this, like up the up the ladder at the end of this this uh, river area. Yeah, it's all about the same. There's an archer back there who's a, who's a complete jerk. Oh, or, or is he? Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah, he's still uh, there. Could... And he's still got the sword guy on the right, and the guy who, in the river who's just about to come out of the bridge. Mm -hmm. One thing I thought was kind of kind of interesting with the with the, these hollow uh, warriors is that they they actually have different health depending on the different equipment they use. Kind of gives you the idea they serve different roles. Like the swordsmen are a little hardier. And I think the toughest ones are the unarmed guys. I mean, they're not much of a threat, but I think they have more HP. I think, I think anyway. Yeah, so, so this axe guy, in the original version, he's playing dead until you go and touch the glowy. Mm -hmm. In this one, he activates just like the others do. Right. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like they... Like some of this stuff, you can tell, they just changed it to throw off people that played the first game. Yeah. Like there's, really no, there's really no reason for that one to pop up and ambush you uh, right at the... Oh, ouch! Oh, the arrows of the head. That's like the most painful, painful animation. Yeah. I mean, Skyrim guards think they have it tough. Try an <laughs> arrow. arrow to the head. It used to be an adventure like you. <laughs> then I took an arrow to the head. <laughs> Speaking of glow, we that one. So, it, so it does... Uh, I've, I didn't watch this one too closely. Is there? Yeah, there's no ambush at all at this point, is there? No. Like once you kill everybody else, you can just yeah. You can just yeah, there's go a, there. There's, yeah, there's a dude playing dead right there, uh, where to to Mog's uh, left, like right close to the water, and he'll and if you don't see him, he'll pop up and attack as you as you get to the uh, as you try to go for that item. Moment a moment's hesitation before going up the uh, before going up the ladder. And this one is pretty much completely different. Yeah, this area is completely different. The first thing you'll notice is no hide night. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, we've got and yeah, instead of a bunch of enemies all attacking you at the start, we've got a bunch of them playing dead. So you can sort of pop around and sort of trigger them one by one. Mm hmm Yeah, I don't know I don't know if you knew this one, but I and I don't remember if you try it, but do you go like behind them as they walk up and backstab them as they stand up? Yeah, sometimes. I, mm -hmm. I don't tend to remember too most of the time. And also th these guys aren't much of a threat. That's true. Yeah, one, one cool thing is that uh, it, it's like, and so it's like one of the you're talking about the difference between console and PC. When uh, the when the PC version of Dark Souls Two first came out, it, it was optimized for 60 FPS, whereas the console versions obviously ran in 30. So when you had things that were based on frames of of contact, like uh, like bleed and poison, and uh, most importantly weapon durability, those things would happen twice as fast. Yeah. So, so PC yeah, so, players went through weapons a lot faster. Oh yeah. And, uh, and, and it, it, that's what we noticed, and I don't know if it was common knowledge beforehand, but that's what we found out, that uh, backstabs don't actually impact your weapon durability. So it kind of uh, changed the, uh, kind of encouraged people to use that stuff more, you know, backstabs and reposts. They made, I was talking backstabs, they made them a lot harder in Bloodborne, because you've got to do two, you've got to do a charge up attack and then a normal attack, if I remember rightly. Hmm. Okay. It's not just a case of sneak up on the enemy. Uh, you're kind of spoiling things for me. I was hoping in Bloodborne I could shoot everybody. <laughs> ah, well, your shooting is more... There's no... There is one shield in Bloodborne, and it's crap. And, in fact, oh. it, its flavor text <laughs> talks about how shields are crap. <laughs> but, basically, Arsh. in Bloodborne, you shoot... You parry by shooting. So, you okay. shoot at the right moment, and then that puts them into ready for a riposte. Okay, I see. And you can do it to most bosses as well, I believe. Oh, that's awesome. And it's called a Viscaral Strike, and it's basically, you get lots of gore effect everywhere. Ooh. So yeah, so this is the next change in this area. Instead of an archer up there, I'll see if I, I swing the camera up again or not, there's one of the two-handed sword dudes who throws fire bombs down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it kind of helps because you can cover a lot more of the area without anybody attacking you from, from a different direction. It, it made it a lot. Made it, it's one of those things where it's like the, dif, the the difficulty balance on Scholar is. One, it's not so much that it's a harder game, although I think it is overall. So far, so far as I've seen it, I haven't, I haven't played the whole game in Scholar yet. But uh, it may be harder overall, but some areas are definitely easier, like uh, like this one. And it, it's made. It's, I think their general enemy placement makes the entire game a lot more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of it is just, some of it is just change for change's sake, but yeah, some of them some really are. Yeah, some just to screw with people who know the original game backwards. Right, but yeah, some of them are just like it kind of makes sense up here that that a lot of these guys would be just you know that they're hollow that, no, that no, nobody's there. They're just going to be you know taking a siesta and then oh oh, oh here, here here comes somebody. Uh, so uh, I I wasn't paying attention. Where did you get your other broken straight sword? Uh, one of them dropped it. Oh, okay. I think there's one on the body there, mm -hmm. and one of them drops one. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think any of them use broken straight swords, so I was kind of, kind of surprised about that, but... Speaking of swords, we got the, guy, we got the foot soldier guy that aggroed there. Yeah, they don't use broken straight swords, but I think they... I guess maybe it just, it's, you're supposed to think it, just, it broke when they dropped it. Yeah, I can see that. Especially with how crummy the durability on the on the hollow weapons is, and uh, so I, this is something I was also was kind of curious about. Why are you using the um, the dagger in your offhand when you don't have the stats to power stance them? Just because. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. also because it uses less stamina, you could theoretically get a dagger attack in when you don't quite have enough stamina for a sword attack without bottoming out your stamina gauge. That's fair. I wasn't really expecting a serious answer, so that, that's uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> now here's this is different in that in the original game, this guy has a buddy and they're both kind of hanging around at the top of the ladder until you get there. This mm -hmm. time, as you saw, he actively came down for me. Right. Yeah, I think I show off that too when I play it, but I don't, I don't remember. You know, I, I, cut, I cut this area kind of... Um, it's like, yeah, I, I, you want to show off as much different a, as possible, and that, that one is, but... I, I, remember when I, I remember when we switched, when, when, when we transitioned here, which is coming up pretty soon. 
Womp. Yeah, I wish enemies took the kind of falling damage you do. It would be nice, wouldn't it? I mean, look yeah, at this. Like... He takes practically nothing. Oh, that was the plunging attack I missed. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you lose half your health and he loses like 10%, maybe. Mm, if that. Yeah. One thing I like about this is the fire bombs. they're actual items in the game. So you can, if you're really good, parry the things. Really? Yeah. I have I think never I've done seen it that. once by accident. <laughs> But it is possible to parry the fire bombs. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, well, clearly you're gonna have to show that off now. <laughs> I sat there for hours, boing, boing. <laughs> well, luckily they have unlimited fire bombs. So. I was wondering why you went back up the ladder, but I, I didn't see that guy. Uh, I didn't see that guy. Yeah, I just wanted to get rid of him. And I think I might have not picked up something up here. Oh yeah, so it was to go back up and get the short sword. Right, right, because you fell off after that. Yeah. After that guy. Yeah, the short sword is another good. Uh, it, it's it's kind of it's one of those things where I was uh, thinking about using the because uh, you know when we fought the the um, the hollow soldier there with with that weird uh, white sword they've got the the foot soldier sword. Uh, it's actually a really good weapon as far in terms of stamina use, a very little very little stamina use and a good move set, but it's really low durability. And then I, so I was thinking about well maybe I should use a there's like a ring you can use that that, it, that lowers the durability drain. You can make it a you can give it a raw enchantment to help with scaling. You know all the stuff to min max it. Then you realize the, the the short sword is basically that exact weapon but better. It's like well, <laughs> so yeah, short sword is actually pretty good. And. Here, here I fail a jump. I, I have a couple goes at this, miss it both times and give up. Everyone falls <laughs> the first time. <laughs> uh, I just, and we're switching to me, I just uh, wanted to show there is no uh, hippo there. And that you can come back and grab the uh, grab the item here <laughs> the other way. Yeah, I, I took the dramatic, the dramatic uh, method of uh, leaping. Mm -hmm. And here's a big difference. There, there are fewer enemies. There's about half as many enemies, but they all start out aggroed in the original game. So, ah. yeah, I, I beat a hasty retreat back down the ladder, and we fight him this way. Yeah, because one of the it, dangers it, of fighting them up there is you, for, is you lose track of exactly where you are and fall down the hole. That's what I was about to say. Yep, I have, I have had exactly that happen. <laughs> and if, you know, even worse, if you're being comboed by them and they knock you off, I mean, the damage you take from them plus the damage you take from a fall, because, of course, in Dark Souls 2, falling is deadly, uh, that, that's pretty much a death right there. One of the cruelest things Dark Souls 2 did is, in Dark Souls 1, if you're to slide down the ladder, you just, you just tap B and off right. you go. In Dark Souls 2, if you tap B... You'd let go of you, the ladder. You let go, right, and hop down. And obviously, yep. <laughs> what you're going to discover this is at the top of the ladder, or off a long ladder. Right. Yeah, because in, in nobody my case, slides down a short ladder. Right. Yeah. In, in my case, it was the uh, the ladder in the, the, the basically after the second bonfire. There's a really long ladder yeah, the that leads to a lower area. Yes. Uh, I tried. I tried short, short, uh, short cutting down that ladder, and it's an instant kill. <laughs> same. Exactly yeah. the same. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see here, there's two guys. Yeah, and they're and and uh, I'm using the uh, the R2 on the dagger there because and yeah, I start, yeah, I was trying to mention that earlier. I forgot. It. Yeah, there we go. How you hop off the ladder. Uh, also showing how the easiest way to do this jump is you kind of line up at the. And it takes it takes me a try or two to line it up. But basically, you want you want to jump diagonally so you get to catch the edge of the the rocks there instead of straight across. So there you go. And it, but all it's worth is ten throwing knives, which it's okay. But you know, throwing knives are very useful, and they made yeah, them, guess... they made them distressingly expensive in Dark Souls Two compared to Dark Souls One. Yeah, they cost they cost ten times as much. They do do about about quadruple the damage. You know, and they scale with about... decks now. Yes, which they didn't scale in Dark Souls One. So ultimately, in the end, in Dark Souls One, all they're really good for is mosquito hunting. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But they Let's do that and... job perfectly. Right. Yep, and, and at 10, 10 a pop, they're about the same price as arrows, so you're not really you're not really out anything. And then I don't know why I kept this in. Oh, but it's because the uh, so there's an archer here instead of the uh, the firebomb guy, uh, like like in Mog's version. And uh, yeah, arrow enemies can track you in in this game. Yeah, they. Uh, oh, this is a close one. Yep, in Dark Souls One, that would have killed me because if you got hit while you were rolling or or uh, jumping, that you, that triggered a that kind of just counter hit damage. Uh, not the case in Dark Souls Two, luckily, 
But uh, yeah, that was that was really close. <laughs> And yeah, in this game, enemies kind of they they can they can lead uh, ranged weapons based on where they think you're going, and they do it like in fighting game style. They read your controller, they have the strength of the direction you're pressing plus the uh, plus the direction, so you can kind of fake them out by spinning in circles or starting to go one way and then go the other way. But uh... well, also there is some auto tracking on the arrows as well that enemies fire. Yeah, you can see them kind of home in. And if, and if you're playing, if you're in co-op, there's a latency factor they do with ranged attacks. And it's easy to see with, with magic, because you'll see them suddenly take like a 45 degree turn and, and hit you. But yeah, they, they do do that to an extent with the arrows and uh, bombs and stuff too. Oh, you're talking about latency and yeah. magic. Years ago, mm -hmm. I used to play Ultimate Online, and the spells in there, wait, you'd, what had happened is somebody would cast a combat spell, Corp Paw, mm -hmm. which is the okay. classic one. And you'd see the little lightning bolt. And if you bolted across the screen, you could just run around for ages with this little graphic chasing yeah. you. Because wow. when Ultima <laughs> Online was first released, everybody was on modems. And they oh, never yeah, yeah. adjusted the game's net code to take into account faster and faster connections. Mm -hmm. So you ended up seeing things like, there's no cap on speed. Somebody wow. on a cable connection could just run, literally run circles around somebody on dial-up and could kill them <laughs> before the dial-up person could even react. That is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, so the, we the, could uh... just ch be chased round and round by this spell effect because, because yeah, it would just never catch you. So I think the damage did catch you. It's just the servers that never rendered the graphical right. effect. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, and the uh, the reason why I was there in the the weapon screen for a second was I was trying to remember what the, what the starting stats and the sorcerer was, and if I could afford to use a better weapon against the Hade Knight. And so I didn't want to no, no, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to just roll back and uh, and try to and blast him the whole fight, but uh, I couldn't get the backstab to work. I couldn't use a weapon that could actually hurt him. So yeah, do this. See that that should have triggered a backstab, but Hade Knights have a really weird kind of uh, they kind of the Black Knights in in uh, Dark Souls One. They're always moving around. So that unless you get them while they're not moving, they're always like they're tilted at an angle, such that it's hard to actually line up the the backstab trigger. Yeah, I find so them I did... very difficult to fight because they're so erratic and their their movements yeah. have such a large backswing on them a lot of the time. Like that time when yeah. he just got clipped by him after trying for the backstab stab mm. when he you know he did the more or less three sixty spin at the torso. <laughs> no scope, yo. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the, Hayden, the Hayden Knight weapons, and I may show off the, the Hayden Knight sword later, but yeah, the Hayden Knight weapons use a slightly different moveset than normal. Like they're kind of, they kind of have low dipping swings and everything. It's kind of cool, but I wish you could do that wacky, yeah, side back, the side swing that they do. It's like enemies approaching on both sides. Yeah, I just hit them. <laughs> And uh, what I like about that one, the corner shot there, is that normally uh, a corner will intercept your weapons. You see that the sparks fly there, mm. and it, it'll prevent the hit from going through. But if it's close enough, it'll still count. And uh, so it's, it's, it's actually easier to try to hit people through walls with uh, daggers and stuff instead of, you know, with, with spears. Whereas yeah, in Dark so Souls 1, you could... Sorry, carry uh -huh. on. Yeah, so this oh, no, one no, has like, an extra yeah. guy in it. Uh huh. That, that's why I cut there, right? There, there's a guy playing dead in the corner. But luckily, he's not armed. So even if he, even if he does get you, it won't be for a whole lot of damage. The bigger change is it's yeah, down here. Can... Mm hmm. Yeah, the bigger change is here. We've got some boxes blocking the road. Pass. And then there's that hollow guy just right around the corner. And it's it's kind of neat. I don't know how well it'll come out when when we get done auto ducking the uh, the audio here. But you can actually hear them breathing when you're that when you're really close to them. Oh, in Demon Souls, you could hear the red-eyed knights breathing. Yeah, it's that was a really cool sound effect. Yeah, it's. <laughs> and you know, you could hear. Sometimes you could hear one, but you could not work out where they were. So you're mm -hmm. playing so nervously because this right. is a <laughs> Yep. Yeah, tra I think the, I think that's one reason why they keep trying to do these heavily armored enemies, trying to recapture the magic of guys like the Black Knights and the uh, the red-eyed knights, and not quite pulling it off. The thing is about the Black Knights is they were so tied into the game lore. You see them mm -hmm. in the intro, and then you've got the Silver Knights as well, who are obviously the ones right. who stayed behind rather than mm -hmm. went with with Gwyn to light the first 
for like the click the kiln. Right, right. Uh, Mog is trying out the yes. In, in Dark Souls One, a throwing knife would have been about twenty or thirty damage. In this case, it's enough to two shot that guy. So that that yeah, it's, they're a lot more useful. There's another dude with fire bombs up there. Fire bombs are one of the most obnoxious things to deal with, and luckily, not too many enemies actually use them. Uh, but yeah, they, they have a pretty big explosive radius, and that the tracking that Mock mentioned, you know, they kind of follow you. It's like yeah, they uh, yeah, they can. You have to you have to dodge them really precisely, you know. And here, there's an arrow guy who can shoot you, who isn't in the base game. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah. That's the um, there's a guy on the on the ramparts over behind you, and it's like the the, the uh, line of sight of ranged enemies in this game is also long. Yeah, like right there, going off in your face. The line of sight of, uh, of enemies in this game on ranged enemies is, is I think is longer too than it was in the first game. No, I I'm not sure about that. <laughs> ho ho ho! And this one's the same. There's a, a buckler there. Uh, bucklers are one of I think there's like the buckler, the target shield, and I think something else in Dark Souls Two that have a special kind of that have a unique uh, parry window. Yeah, I mean in Dark Souls One, I found it a lot easier to parry with a medium shield than I ever did with with what with the items that are supposed to be good for parrying. Right. Yeah. Um, in Dark Souls 2, I found you pretty much have to be using the correct item. Yeah. Yeah, they really nerf the, 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 the parry timing of pretty much everything else. Like, uh, you're trying to use unarmed or parry with a weapon you're holding in two hands. I think it's like four active frames. It's like, that, that's basically nothing. So and this guy, this sword guy who attacked me, he's different. Mm -hmm. um, in the base game... He's not right. there. He's he's a halberd guy who doesn't activate until you go and bother him. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, or... he's he's set up to pretty much attack you as you're trying to get the door open, and his timing is such that you won't yet be in door opening invincibility frames when he comes round. Yeah, here he is. His his yep. version one, uh, the halberd then... guy, who doesn't do anything uh... until you get to him. Yeah, obviously a lot easier to deal with in, in the in the original game. Yeah, yet yeah, nobody nobody interfering with me opening up the door. <laughs> the, you uh, do the, have iframes when you're opening a door, but they don't cut in until a certain point in the animation. Right, right. Yeah, ditto with uh, with the fog doors and the uh, guarding guarding bosses in this game. It's like in the, in Dark Souls One, as soon as you got to them, you started walking through, you were safe. But uh, not in this one. <laughs> And uh, uh, yeah, if you try to if you try to check the door, and I thought I did, but I, I must have forgotten to. If you check the door, it'll tell you that it's locked. But this is one of the very few doors you can just uh, break. Anyway. I just think I know why my video looks a bit murky. Is I actually have my darkness set a lot darker. Okay, whereas I, I have mine on the default settings. That, that that's probably it right there. Why it looks a little bit uh, different. But so, you know, and, cause that chest there, it exists in. The base game, but I didn't actually notice it until my second or third goes through. No, I didn't notice that chest until an invader turned up, and I yeah, ran up yeah. here to wait for them. And you saw the chest. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then I saw that second chest. Oh yeah, and also with with the invader, this is the blue cops finally actually work because mm -hmm. I had one pop up and help me, and he died just before the invader did. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, that, that that I think I think I kept that in here. I think I have. Uh, I think I have a, one boss run, the invader, and then uh, then the then successful. your successful run. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we'll we'll be doing uh, Hades Tower next time, and, uh, and I'm kind of surprised you got it. You got a blue cop to show up th this early, because yeah, there, it's a lot harder to a lot harder to get to them now in uh, in Scholar. Maybe they've got a really extended uh, invasion range. You know that could be. Like in uh, in Dark Souls One, I think you had like fifty levels instead of the normal like uh, ten. You know to try to to try to catch uh, sinners. All right, okay. and uh, I kept this one in because uh, Mog tries to use the hand axe to kill these the stupid lizards here, and. Uh, <laughs> Yep. It's just I did get it eventually, but it was finding the move, finding the attack that would have it hit the floor. Mm -hmm. I think it, 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 on my third go I got it right. 
Yeah, and I kept that one in just for that reason because yeah, I wanted to mention that one of the big things for handling Dark Souls 2, and especially in PvP, is knowing exactly w w which moves hit, hit, hit at which ranges. It's like, yeah, the fact that, like a... Oh, we're talking about the Hades Sword earlier. It's like, Long Swords don't have any weapon, any moves that hit low. They have a they have a thrust, which you might work, but other than that, you have to do a jump attack. Whereas the Axe, you have a chop, and there you go. And the, the whereas the Hades Sword has a kind of a scooping move where it starts low and hits high, and that that works too. And you won't know that until you try to until you experiment with your weapons and and uh, find the move sets that work well for you. Yeah, like in the, going back to Dark Souls One, when uh -huh. fighting the Kappa Demon, you always wanted to make sure you had a weapon that was clear to the right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'd be trying to swing it up against that wall to get exactly. the Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And one of the big changes in Scholar here is that the, instead of having to get close to an enemy to aggro them, he just popped right up as soon as the fight started. So that can be a two-on-one if you don't, if you take too long fighting the halberdier. And a karmic strike. Oh. <laughs> it's, at least I think he got the souls for him. I think I'm not sure. I, I know if you if you die, if your death animation starts. Before the the boss's HP is uh, is gone, uh, you don't get credit for the boss in Dark Souls Two, whereas you would in Dark Souls One. You know, it's possible to, to yeah. Yeah, I've beaten. I think I have had a Dark Souls One boss where it was a yeah karmic strike, as you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 I know. I know for a fact I've had one with uh, the Four Kings. It's like I killed the last guy as a, as his magic attack is flying around, and then it hits me, and then <laughs> you're dead. But you have to go back for your souls. You had to go back to the souls and, and to go talk to Koth if I remember that playthrough right. Yeah, so in that, like, this guy, the one there, doesn't exist in First Sin. It's a Halberdier. Mm -hmm. And the one behind you. Yeah. yeah. There's still there's still an enemy waiting for you, but in Scholar, he's behind the ladder, so you may not even see him. And and he'll aggro as soon as the fight starts, whereas he'll only aggro in, in, the, in the original game if you get close to him. And you had to get really close to him or fight him because you had to pretty, you had to pretty much be sitting on them for them to wake up. 